In this short video, we will go over the famous debate of the Panasonic 12-35 versus the Sigma 18-35. Welcome back everybody, I'm Jake McHugh and this channel is all about making better videos. I do gear reviews along with test videos to help you determine what gear you need to make the videos you want to achieve. If this is something that may interest you, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. So this video was inspired by Phil and he messaged me on Instagram with this exact question on what lens that he should get for his Panasonic GH5. And I will link his Instagram somewhere down here, make sure you check him out. This was a video idea that I've always had in the back of my head just due to the fact that I know it's a very openly discussed conversation that most Panasonic GH5 users have. And I've gone through this question myself. So thank you, Phil, for messaging me. You kind of made me realize, you know what, just make this video right away, Jake. I have reviews on both of these individual lenses where I go more in detail about the lenses themselves. So if you're interested in checking those out, I will link them up in the cards up above and down in the description below. Now, as a quick disclaimer, I no longer have the Sigma 18 to 35, so we won't really have as much B-roll compared to my other videos for comparison's sake. To start off, let's go over the reasons why you should choose the Panasonic 12 to 35 over the Sigma 18 to 35. When it comes to size, the advantage definitely goes to the Panasonic due to the fact that it's only 305 grams and 74 millimeters versus the Sigma, which is 810 grams and 121 millimeters, if I remember correctly. So this lens makes for a much better travel or run and gun situation type lens while having the longer focal length compared to the Sigma and it makes it really nice to pack when you're not using it as well. Like I mentioned, this lens does have that longer focal range due to it being a full frame equivalent of 24 to 70, while the Sigma is only a 25 to 50 millimeter full frame equivalent. While autofocus isn't really great to begin with with most Panasonic camera bodies, you'll have a much better success using autofocus with a native Panasonic lens like the 12 to 35 versus using a adaptive lens like the Sigma. This lens is fully weather sealed and doesn't need any adapter since it's a native mount lens. And if you pair it with a weather sealed body, you can use it when the weather gets pretty rough out. Lastly, this lens has optical image stabilization. And if you pair it with a camera that has IBIS like the GH5 or the G85, you get what is called dual IS. And this makes for a really, really nice situation when shooting handheld due to the fact that the camera body and the lens work together to give you the most stable shot possible. Now let's touch on why you should use the Sigma 18 to 35 versus the Panasonic 12 to 35. The Sigma 18 to 35 is already a fast lens to begin with and if you pair it with a speed booster it brings the aperture down to an f1.2 and when you consider the fact that this is a zoom lens you're basically getting three primes in one lens. If you're looking into getting the Sigma 18 to 35 and looking to save some money I did a review on a budget-friendly speed booster and I'll have that linked up in the cards and down in the description below. When thinking about the Sigma it is a zoom lens and you may think that it's not that sharp because of this but that's the furthest thing from the truth. The Sigma 18-35 is the sharpest lens that I've used to date, and it's definitely sharper than the Panasonic 12-35. With having the faster aperture, you can get away with more shooting in low light, and it definitely does a lot better than the Panasonic in this regard. I tend to feel that you can get a more cinematic or pleasing image out of the camera with using the Sigma due to the fact that it has a better shallow depth of field compared to the Panasonic. If you tend or prefer to pull focus manually, you'll definitely like using the Sigma more compared to the Panasonic due to the fact that the Panasonic is a focus by wire lens. Lastly, considering the fact that you can get the Sigma and the Canon EF mount, you have the ability to grow with this lens due to the fact that you can adapt it to pretty much any camera system. You can use it on your crop mirrorless camera right now, and you can grow with it and use it on a cinema camera someday as well, making this the better solution for you if you use a lot of different camera systems. So to wrap this quick video up, let's go over my final thoughts about these two lenses. If you are someone who shoots mostly run and gun handheld situations, or even if you vlog and you shoot primarily outdoors or in control lit situations, I think the Panasonic is the better route for you due to the fact that you have the dual IS and you don't have to worry about low light situations as often. If you are someone who values a light or compact setup or you value the versatility in a focal range, the Panasonic is definitely the route to go for you as well due to the fact that it gives you that longer focal range while being about half the size of the Sigma. If you are someone who shoots indoors 
or uncontrolled lighting situations and you shoot handheld about half the time, I think the Sigma might be the better route for you due to the fact that you have that lighter aperture and it's a heavier lens. With having IBIS in the Panasonic cameras, you really don't have to worry about getting shaky footage with this lens, but it may become tiresome when using it all day long. If you are someone who has multiple camera systems or you think about changing camera systems or brands down the line, then the Sigma is definitely the route to go due to the fact that it's much more adaptable compared to a micro four thirds lens. At the end of the day, you really can't go wrong with either lens and they're both really great. You just have to figure out what works best for you. I find that the Panasonic works best for my workflow and my needs, but it might not be the same for you. So I suggest that you write down a list and see what checks off the most boxes for your needs. The Sigma 18 to 35 was one of the best, if not the best and sharpest lens that I have ever used, but I just did not find it really practical for my needs. So that's gonna do it for this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it and got something out of it. If you liked this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and consider hitting that bell, that way you get notified when I drop future videos, just like this one here. And last but not least, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.